Congratulations to all our graduates. I am pleased now to introduce the class speaker, Maya Funada, an anthropology major from Tokyo, Japan. No one told me I had to wear a hat on the stage. Thank you, President, and other decision makers on the stage for providing so much content for my speech. It was really difficult to choose which stories to tell. I was curious about how a random nerd like little old me could represent nearly 500 diverse graduates for this special day. To address this challenge, I emailed every single member of the class of 22, legally from the public directory. <laughs> Some of you, like the typical Hamilton students, enthusiastically responded to my inquiry. Others, also like the typical Hamilton students, never got back to me. <laughs> if you didn't receive my email, though, you probably took some time off during the COVID year, just like myself. I'm sorry you didn't get my questions, but I'm more sorry that we have one more semester to endure. <laughs> but for those of you who will finally escape from the brutal Clinton weather, just like what we are expecting this afternoon, I asked two questions. One. What is the most rewarding change you have experienced at Hamilton? And two, what is the most disappointing change you wish had or hadn't happened? Oh, don't worry, I'll keep my language PG-13. <laughs> In my survey, our biggest disappointment was the pandemic. But surprisingly, many of you praised our resilient, and curious responses during COVID as our most positive change. For example, some of us took Zoom classes at 6 a.m. in the West Coast or 3 a.m. in East Asia. But eventually, we all learned to show up to class in pajamas from bed, even in the afternoon. <laughs> Under the strict regulations for indoor socializing, we all learned to hang out with our friends outdoors, even in the 30 degree temperatures. You see, Hamilton students don't just give up. Instead, we use our resilient curiosity to envision how to conquer persisting challenges. Since we juggled our schoolwork with household responsibilities, our mental health struggles intensified during the pandemic. Our friendships and mentorships have shaped this incredibly caring environment. Uh-oh. This is how we've conquered the adversity. Having gone through such chaos demonstrates just how strong our class has become, both individually and collectively. Our resilience in the face of COVID maintained this community because we refuse to let go of our home Yet, the very same resilience transformed our community because we hope to improve this ironic family thing. Oh my God! Throughout this semester, for example, we continuously promoted reproductive justice, although the administration scolded us, <laughs> for expressing free and thoughtful speech through honest posts online, creative banners and commons, and satirical pieces in campus publications. <laughs> Rather than forcing an oversimplified common ground, we wisely applied the liberal arts principles of critical thinking and effective communication, which Hamilton proudly celebrates especially in its marketing materials. In this way, our fearless, resilient curiosity always pushed us to question the status quo and seek systemic change. 
because Hamilton, we moved the Boston policy after our class. A large group of students, alumni, and faculty fought for transparency about this decision. Because Hamilton refused to divest its $1.5 billion endowment from fossil fuel companies. Hundreds of us went on strike for climate justice. Because Hamilton addressed the use of date rape drugs with victim blaming, the entire campus wore black to join the demonstration organized by survivors. At first, we didn't even know what kind of change was needed. Yet again, our resilient curiosity inspired us to ask critical yet compassionate questions. During the Black Lives Matter movement, leaders of Black and Latinx Student Union collected over 1,600 signatures to petition against a performative diversity initiative, which had excluded experts on campus who had already been working on racial justice for years and decades. This past March, nearly a quarter of the school filled the library to learn about targeted and organized faculty harassment within our community and U.S. higher education, about which the administration has yet to make a public statement. But I just made it now. <laughs> Even in preparation for this commencement, HEAP scholars have updated an obsolete commencement tradition by surveying hundreds of students in an effort to have our multilingual names pronounced correctly. <laughs> At the end of the day, I am grateful for our Hamilton education that has enabled us to not only recognize these carefully sanitized issues, but also take bold initiatives to make the world more just and equitable. <sighs> and more importantly, we all care about Hamilton enough to make it better, not just for ourselves, but for those who are dear to our hearts. Black female anthropologist and author Zora Neale Hurston wrote, there are ears that ask questions and ears that answer. Our four ears at Hamilton were ones that asked resilient and curious questions. Some are personal. Where should we take our lives after knowing thyself? How should we stay in touch with our lifelong friends and mentors? Other questions are systemic. How will we make finance more sustainable and fix white supremacist education? <sighs> How will we combat anti-queer bigotry, body size stigma, and ableist structures? We also asked deeply reflective questions too. Am I good enough? Am I curious enough to confront my own biases while actively learning about issues that might not directly affect me? Am I resilient enough to challenge the very institutions my life depends on while actively giving up some of my own privilege to support the marginalized? In fact, I'm not sure yet. After all these years at Hamilton, we still might not know compelling answers to these uncomfortable yet necessary questions. And most likely, we will keep finding unexpected and more complex questions in the real world. But this community 
has given us every tool and every reason to bravely venture into discomfort. This is how we've grown. And that's why I'm hopeful for our future. I'm hopeful because I've seen our resilience enhance this community with our relentless questioning. I'm hopeful because I've seen our curiosity challenge us to take nothing at face value. And I'm hopeful because I know we don't just give up. Beyond this Hamilton bubble, we may not know how to initiate change at first, but with the resilient curiosity we have mastered together, our questions only mean we don't know yet. Congratulations, class of 2022, as well as 21.5 and 22.5. Thank you, Maya. It may now be apparent why college presidents have come to believe that today's commencement will show up on tomorrow's electrocardiogram. <laughs> but our mission is to prepare our students for lives of meaning, purpose, and active citizenship. So even when we disagree, we can applaud their passion. <laughs>